WEAF, New York. A pack of Avalon cigarettes, please. Yes, sir. Oh, just a moment, sir. Don't forget your change. You'd never guess, but Avalon's cost you less. So why not always travel along with Avalon? Good evening, friends. Good evening. This is Del King saying welcome to Avalon Time with Kurt Massey, Edna Stilwell, Jeanette, the Avalon Chorus, Bob Strong and his orchestra, and Red Skelton. The orchestra opens the program with The Ladies in Love With You. just light up an Avalon cigarette, you'll understand why millions upon millions of smokers are switching to them. You see, Avalons are entirely new, different from all others. And the reason they're different, they're quality cigarettes that sell for less, three to five cents less than other popular priced brands. And that repeated saving of three to five cents on every pack will net you many extra dollars in a very short time. But without knowing, you'd never guess they cost you less. Avalons are union-made from the very finest Turkish and domestic tobaccos. In fact, you couldn't get finer quality tobacco in any other cigarette, regardless of price, regardless of brand. Without question, Avalons are the cigarette buy of today. Why not try a pack the next time? And now we present the only man in radio whose name appears on the first page of Who's Through, <laughs> Red Skelton. <laughs> Thank you very much and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I feel great tonight. Say, we had a lot of fun at the circus, eh, Dell? Yeah, that's right, Red. <laughs> Say, I saw an old girlfriend of mine out there, the bearded lady. Look at I bought her some flowers and I bought her some candy and some razor blades. <laughs> uh, Red, uh, did you ever kiss a bearded lady? No, that's a pretty tickly situation. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I started to kiss her this afternoon. I saw somebody coming, so I didn't kiss her on the right cheek. I walked around to the left cheek. And well, then... Wait a minute. Why don't you stop beating around the bush? <laughs> uh... <laughs> well, you know, the folks at the circus didn't think they were going to get the tin up in time this season. One of the elephants ate the coffee pot and they couldn't find the ground. <laughs> oh, I had a lot of fun at the circus, so I saw a double header, the Siamese twins. <laughs> Going into the big top, I stopped and bought some pink lemonade. You know what pink lemonade is? That's a tummy ache in Technicolor. <laughs> I saw the sword swallow, and after he swallowed about ten knives, eight swords, and a hacksaw, a lady in front of me leaned down to her little boy and said, and you gripe about cast oil. <laughs> <laughs> the strong man was writing a letter. Oh, this was funny. The strong man was writing a letter, and he made a mistake, so he used the rubber face man for an eraser. <laughs> it wasn't so good either, was it? The uh, contortionist was a friend of mine. He was complaining about his salary, <laughs> so just to embarrass the boss, he got out in front of the tent and sat on his own head. <laughs> One way of making both ends meet. <laughs> oh, I saw Dizzy Dean. <laughs> Have you been reading this, lady? <laughs> 
I saw Dizzy Dean out there. No kidding. He saw the, uh, this uh, Indian faker laying on one of those beds of mail. <laughs> he says, now there had been a perfect excuse. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's enough clowning around. So Jeanette at this time will sing, My Heart Has Wings. Sing it, pretty girl, but with mm. <laughs> singing, My Heart Has Wings, and very pretty, too. Uh, say, Red, uh, what'd you do about your summer hotel in the mountains? You know, uh, chalet to pay on the bald eagle knob? <laughs> <laughs> I let my uncle take it back, but he gave me a job as a social director. He did? Yeah, and would you believe it? Since I took the job over as social director... The guests aren't speaking to each other. No, they... <laughs> <laughs> they are, so... Say, I'm having a lot of fun up there. I got them playing all kinds of games. The only game they don't seem to get is bingo. And they're too old to learn it. I, I, I can't see that age has anything to do with it. Well, it has. Every time I yell out the number 65, they all yell, Social Security. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but I got a real treat for them tonight. I've got to get back up there. We're going to put on a play for them in the barn. Boy, is that going to be a turkey in the straw. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's Roger, the fiddle player again. Don't kid yourself. It's going to be terrific. We're going to put on Dangerous Dan McGrew. I play the part of Dan McGrew. A part was made famous by my uncle when he was with a road company. You know, he broke records for attendance. You mean he broke rocks at Alcatraz? Yes. <laughs> ah, quiet, Roger. I'm playing the part because I'm a pretty dangerous guy. Yeah, you and Casper Milk Toast. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I'm plenty dangerous, brother, and don't kid yourself that I'm not. Why, only yesterday morning I went up in the mountains to hunt bears with only a revolver in my hand. I hear a noise. I wheeled around, I fired a shot, and there lay a dead bear. How long do you figure he'd been dead? About two weeks. <laughs> oh, what's the use? Come on, let's get up in the mountain so we can put on the play. Uh, say, Red, uh, maybe I'll spend the week up there. I, I suppose you feature an excellent cuisine. No, but the food's good. <laughs> say, and does that air up there make you hungry? You come down for breakfast and you feel like eating a horse. <laughs> and after you've tasted the food, you wish you had. <laughs> <laughs> well, how's your appetite, Red? Oh, I do all right. He does all right. Why, every time he sits down in the dining room, the waitresses have a game they play called Glutton, Glutton, Who's Got the Glutton? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go on, Bob Strong. Let's have the South American way while we start north. <laughs> Thank you. 
up at the Summer Hotel Chalet Toupet, where Red Skelton is acting as antisocial director. And here's the great man now. Well, greetings, everybody. I'm glad to see so many of you gathered here in the screwball room. <laughs> now for our play, The Shooting of Dan McGrew. I'm going to play the part of Dan McGrew. And of course, I get shot in the end. <laughs> okay, Del, you lay the scene, I'll lay the egg. With a low bow to Robert W. Service, we present The Shooting of Dan McGrew, or You Can Take It With You. <laughs> Curtain. A bunch of the boys were whooping it up in the Malamute Saloon, and the kid that handles the music box was ragging a jag time tune. Oh, shucks, I've done it again, done it again. Funny how music inspires me to do things. By the roulette wheel stood that Yukon heel, the dangerous Dan McGrew. And just behind him, a watching his luck, was a lady that's known as Lou. Say, McGrew, ain't it against the law, law to run games a chance? Certainly is, my little trillium. But the players don't have a chance around here. <laughs> Look, the ball stopped on a winner. What a coincidence. Did the same thing last year, too. <laughs> Looks like you win, partner. Come on, the drinks are on the house. <clears throat> Say, Lou, tell the bartender to get out that recipe for that double-rich Mickey Finn. <laughs> Nothing doing. That may, miner may not be a sourdough to you, but he's my sweet cookie. Oh, sweet cookie, eh? Well, do not forget. <laughs> do not forget that around these parts, I'm known as the best shark. In fact, I'm the best when half shark. <laughs> Say, Lou, how about you and me having a dance? Scram, you're not the guy I want. You couldn't have any gold with a pan like yours. <laughs> oh, give me the brush off, huh? Turning me down. What is this? The spurn of the nart? <laughs> Come on, you're gonna dance with me or else, babe. Step aside, my little wood sparrow. Looks like you're going to have to elf. <laughs> what a bullseye. Listen. Bad. You're getting this place all cluttered up with victims. That's two of them. Uh, I can't do a thing about it, though. I'll have to wait till the spring thaw to do my planting. <laughs> Who's that over there? Looks like a Mountie just came in. It's too late to move the evidence. 
Hey, my scarlet-coated friend, are you a mounted policeman? Well, I ain't a motorcycle cop. <laughs> I am Henfro to the mountain. <laughs> well, you look like a good egg, Henfro. <laughs> Step up and have something on the house. Uh -uh, careful you don't trip over those corpus delectors. Oh, good heavens! Say, Mr. McGrew, you'll just have to subdue your urge to purge. <laughs> Think nothing of it, my red-coated friend. That's nothing but the face on the barroom floor. But there's two of them. Yes, I know. My goodness sake, don't tell me you've gone in for double features. <laughs> Mr. McGrew, you'll just have to rub them out. That's a little matter I've already taken care of. Well, I really ought to ask you a lot of questions, but uh, I just hate to pry into other people's business. Oh, yes. A lesson well learned, my friend. Step up and have a double brandy, will you? Oh, no, thanks. Very I good. never drink anything stronger than a double chin. Double chin? <laughs> double chin. Don't believe I've ever heard of a drink called double chin. Well, it's the fat horse's neck. <laughs> But I won't take anything. You see, I'm in the dog team division of the Mounted, and I'm working night shifts. And by the time I go off duty at half past April or a quarter to May, I just know I'm going to have Arctic circles under my eyes. <laughs> well, what's that? Oh, good heavens, that's my dog team. Well, I got to go now. I got to feed my Huskies some Wheaties and mush. <laughs> Good old Mountie. He'd look good in my trophy room. I've always wanted a mounted policeman. <laughs> Better take that, Lou. Oh. Good evening. This is McGrew's booze. What can I do for you? <laughs> what? You want to buy a big gold claim? Well, we have none for sale right now. But I tell you, we don't have any gold mines for sale. Yes. Yes. Yes, we have no bonanzas. <laughs> Say, Lou, I just got bright flashes in front of my eyes Bright flashes? Yes. Must be your liver No, I think it's my northern lights <laughs> Hey, partner, I ain't got any gold dust and they can't pay for my drinks Somebody stole my poker dust Well, anybody's got a poke of dust, bites it <laughs> I messed that up a little there, stranger, I'll try it again <laughs> Well, anybody that ain't got a... Uh, let it go. I messed it again. <laughs> anybody ain't got the dust around here, bite it. I got it. Here it comes. <laughs> well, well, an empty chamber. Death takes a holiday. <laughs> hey, McGrew, I bring in another poke of dust the next time I come in. There's no credit here, my friend. I'm going to maul you with both my bare hands. Oh, I guess you better not either. I'll let you bring in the gold dust. A poke in the till's better than two in the puss. <laughs> Did you hear that, Lou? A poke in the till's worth two in the puss. It ain't funny, McGrew. Oh, it is. <laughs> then out of the night that was 50 below and into the din and the glare, there stumbled a miner fresh from the creeks, dog dirty and loaded for bear. Just a minute, just a minute. <laughs> Well, cut off my head and call me Baldy. If it ain't dangerous, damn it, gruesome. <laughs> well, Professor McGraw, <laughs> you look like the sixth spell of the Yukon. Pooh, pooh, McGrew. The ragtime kid had cashed in his chips. There was no one else on the stool, so the stranger stumbled across the room and flopped down there like a fool. <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. How else could I do it? <laughs> In a buckskin shirt that was glazed with dirt, he sat, and I saw him sway, and he clutched the keys with his taloned hands. My gosh, but that man could play. Well, my chattering comrade, you sure do finger that piano. Maybe you'd like to hear me sing something. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. With them, we'll make it snow. With them, we'll make it snow. With them, we'll make it snow. And that's all I know. <laughs> Say, Professor, would you care to tee off little African golf, would you? No, but I might play a game of poker if you let me deal so I won't get lost in the shuffle. 
I always play a straight game, partner. I even mark my own cards. <laughs> Here's a fresh steak I just got out of the icebox. <laughs> Don't touch them, I'll steal them myself. Here you are, let's see, it's five cards for you and five for me. Pretty little things, aren't they? Only five cards? <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry, I thought I would steal them. Hmm, yeah. <laughs> look at these cards. I bet a hundred. I'll raise you a hundred. I bet a thousand. I'll raise you a thousand. I bet a million. I'll raise you a million. I bet he shut up. <laughs> All right, I'll call you. That's fine, I win. Just a minute, get them, and I got a royal flush. What have you got? Two pairs. Jack and six shooters. <laughs> Boy, you two are lucky. But now it's my turn to deal. Shuffle them thick, shuffle them thin, deal them careful, then I'll win. <laughs> there, bet a million. I call. I got a king high straight. What do you got? Oh, let's see. I got king, queen, jack, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> You mean you got 13 cards? Certainly. What's the matter? You're superstitious or something? <laughs> so long, I'm taking a pot. Y you wouldn't dare. <laughs> that would be dishonest, my little chum. Are you accusing me of cheating or something? Are no. you trying to say that I'm a cook or no. something? Why, this whole thing is unconstitutional. Why, for two turns, I take this gun and knock your pot. Now, don't get excited. I'm excited. Who's excited? I'm not excited. <laughs> Now put that gun down. Put it down right away, folks. I ducked my head and the lights went out. Two guns blazed in the dark. <laughs> you got me, pal. You've done me in, partner. Well, maybe that'll teach you a lesson. That's more than a lesson, chum. It's the whole course. Dan. Dan. Now, I'm not as wise as these lawyer guys, but strictly between us few, the woman that kissed him and pinched his poke Ow! was a lady that's known as Lou. <laughs> There's a right pretty song that came out lately, friends. It's called My Last Goodbye. Bob Trendler put it into a very nice arrangement for Kurt Massey and the Avalon Chorus. Here it is, my last goodbye. Sing it, Kurt. I smiled, so did you. But somehow we knew it was my last goodbye. Goodbye to you. 
Ladies and gentlemen, ask any jitterbug what he thinks about Avalon cigarettes, and he'll reply... Rockin', rollin', jammin', jivin', boy! In that groove? Yeah, man, that's Avalon! <laughs> <laughs> and by way of interpretation, friends, he means Avalons have everything, and believe me, they have. They give you both outstanding quality and real money-saving economy. Avalons are union-made from the choicest Turkish and domestic tobaccos that grow, blended to perfection to give you the very finest in real smoking pleasure. That's why you'd never guess they cost you less. Three to five cents less per pack than other popular price brands. Three to five cents less for cigarettes that are unsurpassed in quality. With all the definite advantages Avalon's offer, they're certainly worth a trial. So, ladies and gentlemen, in the language of the jitterbug, modulate to Avalon, which means switch to Avalon. Try a pack tonight. <laughs> goes another 30 minutes that you can uh, file away in my diary. Right, old Red. I'll place it under July. Under July, under anything. What's the difference? As long as you bury it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I suppose you're referring to my play, eh, Rogers? Well, I understand that the critics are waiting out in the hole, and they're not going to give me four belts. No, you'll probably wind up with about three scars. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what's the use? Good night, folks. I'll see you next week. Remember, friends, during the week when you ask for Avalon... Don't forget your change. Oh, why not always travel on with Avalon? Yes, you'd never guess, but Avalon's cost only 10 cents, plus city or state tax. Be with us next Saturday evening at the same time when the Brown and Williamson Tobacco Corporation will again present Avalon Time. Del King speaking. Good night. Heard on this program was South American Way from Street to Paris. Avalon Time has come to you from our Chicago studios and this is the National Broadcasting Company. W-E-A-F, New York, night.